Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Dev Diary. Today we are working on a game that mixes the mechanics of type matchups from Pokemon with the puzzle rules from Dorf Romantic. Now before we get into just what that looks like, remember to leave a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Make sure notifications are also turned on so you don't miss future videos. So a quick primer to get us all up to speed, Pokemon's battle system has type advantages and disadvantages that can change the damage power of particular moves. So for example, fire damage is effective against plant types, but weak against water types. And Dorf Romantic is a puzzle game where the player must place tiles onto a board, matching sides as they go to obtain more pieces and continue the process for as long as possible. And so you may be able to see where we're going with this one. In our puzzle game, the player must place tiles onto a board, but instead of matching sides, points are awarded based on Pokemon's type matchups. And before we continue, I just want to point out that indeed, our tiles do in fact only have four sides, unlike Dorf Romantic 6, because math is hard and I couldn't figure out how to make a hexagonal grid. But speaking of grid, this is how we keep track of our tiles placed. It's a 2D array full of arrays containing the data for each face of each tile that exists on the board. So for example, each piece generated randomly sets a face with one of 14 choices, all represented by different simplistic doodles of Pokemon from each type. And no, there isn't any real rhyme or reason to which monsters were chosen, other than trying to go with creatures that would be easy to identify at a really, really low resolution. Anyway, once we've generated a piece, it can be rotated via mouse wheel. And to simplify the process, rotations are done by adding or subtracting 90 degrees from each piece's current direction, resulting in four cardinal directions for our icons to rest. And let me just say that the assumption that 360 degrees means 360 degrees in programming is foolish. Let me explain. Now when the player places a tile, a ton of things are done at that moment. First, our pieces are recorded based on their position when placed, which again is based on rotation. The problem is that by adding or subtracting 90 from a value, despite only viewing it in a 360 degree scope, does not default to simply existing within a 360 degree scope. So good old math was required in order to balance this out. Long story short, uh, by using modulo, so moduli, uh, we were able to take whatever number our angle is set to and eventually break it down so that we once again have four usable cardinal directions to work with. That data is then passed on to the type check function, which is a giant list of type matchup switches based off data from the first generation of Pokemon. In other words, no steel, dark, fairy, etc. A number is output based on the results, which will be used in various places. An indicator is then added to a visual cue, and finally the piece is placed onto the board via another function. And just to make sure we're not drawing hundreds of icons by the end of things, each tile is quote unquote stamped onto a surface, which is then saved as a drawn sprite, meaning we can have as many icons on the board as we need with a little to no hit to performance. And just a quick aside, this type check was a nightmare to figure out. Initially, it seemed like doing a cross check between tiles would be the most simple option. North checks south, west checks east, and so on. But no, somehow the system recorded the numbers in a manner that I, I don't even know how it works. I mean, just look at this. The east tile needs to check the west face of the north tile. However, the north tile needs to check the south face of the west tile. Somehow there's at least a 90 degree discrepancy and I'm sure there's a mathematical pattern to be devised here, but I just had to point this out for the absolute accidental absurdity. Although I do also concede that I may be overthinking the whole thing. Anyway, after all this is done, points are added to the player's score and a counter is updated. This counter works similarly to an experience meter, and so earning enough points will award the player with more pieces. However, as the game goes on, that requirement does grow, and it was hard to determine which would be more fun, score or time, but in the end, score felt like it would provide a better, more cozy experience that reflected Dark Romantic's gameplay. And that's the gist of the code base for this one, other than some camera control code like being able to drag the camera or move it with WASD. Visually, it was tough to convey information, which is why for the sake of, you know, having something, a list of icons and their results for placing the tile show up on the left. 
Honestly, the low resolution was an actual hindrance with this one, and it's probably my only major gripe so far. And in general, I think this concept actually has some merit, and I would like to complete it, but doing so is going to require a few changes. Notably dropping the whole Pokemon aspect for, you know, obvious copyright reasons, but also bumping up the resolution and redoing the graphics so, you know, we have some better visual options. But overall, this ended up being a lot more fun than anticipated, and I think with a few tweaks to, you know, maybe add some challenge to the concept, this could be a fun way to waste some time. So, what do you think? Can you see yourself playing something like this? Leave any and all thoughts in the comments, especially if you've played games like Dark Romantic. And quick reminder that you can already play some of my other games that have been featured on the channel and even get early access to the weekly videos by subscribing to my Patreon. And with that said, brings us to the end of today's Dev Diary, so thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.